I'm a fucking snack, so if I'm a snack, my parents must be treats. <laughs> gentlemen creamers and dreamers alike this is a special day and there are many reasons why it's a special day but first and foremost let me introduce myself my name's Lauren Laroe this is Lauren's dream house uh, it takes place at the top of the World Trade Center in a very small jar where I was captured after talking too much shit about 9-11 too close too close to where it all went down. Um, I don't regret anything. However, I've been trapped in here and they only let me out to do this and to have sex with Larry Silverstein, the 99 year old man who made it all come down in the first place. Shouts out to Larry Silverstein and shouts out to 9-11. We'll start this very, very strong. Um, <laughs> No, but really, welcome to Lauren's Dream House. Uh, you are now embarking on my journey that I've been waiting for since I was five years old. I've always wanted my own show, and I've always wanted it to be just like this, and I've always wanted to do it with people like this. Shouts out to Too Much Content. You guys know them. You love them. We got Ani Moosh and Irish O'Neill in the house. Thank you. Thank you for believing in me and supporting me. This is such a fucking trip, and I can't believe that I get to do this. So thank you. Um, you might be wondering what this means. Um, this is not a $9 million NFT yet. Um, I don't really believe in NFTs, and I hope you don't either, but that's another discussion for another day. Um, the reason behind this is very important to me. You may have heard of a man named R. Kelly, and you may have heard good things about him or bad things about him. Um, I'm one of the people who has mixed feelings about R. Kelly for the following reasons, and they're, they're probably similar conflicting reasons that you have with him or, or Michael Jackson or any other <laughs> really problematic but really talented musicians. Um, R. Kelly is a pedophile, rapist, um, and really good singer. <laughs> and um, vaccine uh, hero. I don't know if any of you have seen <laughs> that video where he's all like, do you have your passports? Do you have your shots? Do you want to come back with me to America? Have you never seen that before? Oh, can we do this real quick? Sorry to throw that up on you real quick. If you go on YouTube and you go R. Kelly... Um, passport shot song. Um, he literally goes on stage. This is one of the greatest videos of all time. Um, and I'll get to the number in a second, but this is good context here. Because certain people need to be regarded as what they are. Like they're problematic, but they're special. And I don't want anyone to protect him. I don't want anyone to make excuses, excuses for him. He's a monster. Um, but it doesn't mean that certain aspects of his career or things that he's made can't live on in a way that is useful to people like us who aren't criminals and rapists and pedophiles and piss bandits or whatever the fuck. Um, do you have it? Uh, it should be that. Yep, that's a good one. I got it. Oh, wait, I forgot I had to put this down. Okay, go ahead. This is really special. Oh, I don't have I sound. It. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Do you have your passport? <laughs> Did you get your shots? You've never seen this? Girl, would you like to come back with Rob to America? I remember. Do, 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 do. America. He's feeling himself so hard, too. And it's improvised, obviously. I mean, I'm saying that like... And then the background singers, they start lifting it up. Now it's a sermon. 
Now it's an experience. Do you have your passport? Didn't you get your card? And everyone. Everyone's in it. But everyone, all the girls too are like, pick me, you know? Also trying too hard. Shaking. He's shaking. That's fine. There's that's enough of that. Uh really happy that I get to be the person to show that to you. And if there's anyone else out there who hasn't seen that, you're fucking welcome. Um so yeah, vaccine proponent. Um he do you have your passport? Do you have your shots? The two most important questions. Honestly, cultural foreshadowing. Because now we're going to be asking each other that all the time. Like, do you have your passport? Do you have your shots? Now you're able to go inside of my dim sum restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, that that's like a clip that will live in infamy. And for that reason and many other reasons, he's a, a problematic uh, gem. I'm not going to say problematic fave, but he's certainly something. And the unfortunate thing that happens when someone in the in the public eye does something really bad or in his case does something really bad repeatedly um people come out and they have corroborated the the uh, abuse stories and um it's there's pretty much like no doubt it's not like an oj situation where people are like he he didn't do that shit like everyone's like yeah r kelly pissed on the world and that sucks but the sad side effect of that and i think it's sad personally um is that the music becomes a problem too. And I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I love R. Kelly music and you all do too. And I mean, some of you are okay with saying that out loud and others are not. Um, hot in here, not hot in here, that's fucking no. Nelly. Um, what am I talking about? Trapped in the closet. Um, hot in the closet, P pissed on in the, in the club. Um, I mean, he has so many great things beyond Trapped in the Closet, but Trapped in the Closet changed my life. I mean, I remember times at the Stress Factory, and I used to work at the Stress Factory. I'll get into that in future episodes. I'll be name dropping only good things. Um, but I've had a lot of funny stories and uh, coming from the Stress Factory. And one night I was with Jessica Kearson, and we were hanging out. Everyone's cleaning up. And... They were like, Lauren, you can put something on the TV. And I put on Trapped in the Closet. It was like my junior year of college, um, you know, seven, eight years ago or whenever the fuck that was at this point. But um, she was like, what is this? And I was like, don't tell me you've never heard of Trapped in the Closet. And she was like, oh, that's what that is. Let's check it out. And I started, I mean, I've seen it so many times. I know every word for the first seven chapters. And they're not songs. They're they're cut up into chapters because it's like a soap opera and it's the most ridiculous thing of all time and people need to know about it and that should live on that shouldn't die just because he's a piece of shit and I will, will never feel better than than the moments at the stress factory where I was able to make comics that I love laugh so hard and that was one of those instances where I was just really enthusiastic talking about like the history of trapped in the closet um, like some kind of historian and she was all in it and I was like someday I'm going to make this into a full bit because I really care about it um, so I love R. Kelly and I hate R. Kelly but the number above the significance is this so if everyone feels weird about listening to his music they don't want to listen to it and support him um, even if he's in jail or whatever he's doing right now like awaiting sentencing I don't even know what exactly he's doing right now but the music shouldn't die. People should be able to enjoy it without feeling like they're supporting him. So I looked it up, and it seems that as of April 2021, R. Kelly's catalog was for sale um, to help pay for his legal fees and all the other debts that he has. Um, and they said that the number for the catalog um, is anywhere between $8.4 million and $10 million. It used to be somewhere around 22 million um, not too long ago. But in light of recent rumors, <laughs> people have decided it might cost a little less. Uh, and at this point, they're just like, we want to get rid of it because he has nothing else to his name. So 
Um, I believe that if you want to make something happen, if you want to set your intentions and you want to go forward and accomplish something, conquer something, it has to be specific. You can't just say, I want to be a millionaire one day. You have to say, what is the exact number that I could make that would make me feel like I'm comfortable and like I've made it? I used to say 20 million. That's still like my number. I still, I feel like 20 million is good, but I need $9 million because I'm not going to pay the bot. I need to make them an offer they can't refuse, right? And the longer we wait, the more desperate he'll be. I'm sure the number will go down and down and down. And maybe that number will change in a couple of months. And I believe me, I will look it up every day, making sure that I'm making a fair offer. But right now, the goal is $9 million. I would like to will that into existence. I want to make enough money to buy R. Kelly's catalog. I want to take it. And I want to recast and remake Trapped in the Closet with all people who are sexual assault victims or people who have been affected in some way so that people can like own it, right? And the way that he wrote the Trapped in the Closet saga is so brilliant and hysterical that it can't be like re-sang by anybody so better believe it will be intact in that way but we'll have like new people acting it out we'll have like you know a cast and a crew that um, can take ownership of this thing and perpetuate it so that it could live on in the way that it really ought to so Join me in my quest to make $9 million to buy R. Kelly's catalog so that we can turn his music into something that we can all enjoy. Good? Great. That's item number one. $9 million. <laughs> Let's go. Um, there's a lot going on in the world. I don't, uh, I don't condone it. I'll tell you that much. I don't love it. Uh, things have been so shitty and like I'm normally a very positive person and I still am even now even as all of this drama is going on I don't know apparently like Ray Liotta killed a bunch of kids in Texas I don't have a TV I have no idea but um <laughs> uh no I'm joking obviously uh there's there's horrors going on in everyone's personal lives all around the country we can't feed our kids the moon and planets are wronging us everyone is just being generally wronged and that doesn't really sit well with me either. But I thought it was all in my head because your boy's about to get her period <laughs> and everything turns upside down in my mind and things aren't real and I can't really trust my own thoughts most of the time. Wild. Uh, but things are so universally shitty for so many people that even guys are coming up to me and being like, is there something going on with the planets or something? I'm like, why are you asking me? They're like, you're a girl. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Mercury in retrograde does end on June 2nd. You're right. We, <laughs> there is a target for this. Um, I'm hoping that by the time June 2nd hits, and maybe this comes out on or around that probably June 1st or whatever, um, hopefully things will, will feel a little bit brighter, especially because, I mean, it's the goddamn summer in New York City. We got to be doing better out here. This is like gearing up to be hot pod summer. And we were all going to like get drunk and have like a silly time. And I really hope that that still happens. But everyone's getting fucking railed by the moon. And that's not really fair. Uh, but you got to just keep like our job as comics and entertainers. And I know it sounds pretty like, like, oh, I have a job. But uh, it's true. Like I do this to make other people feel better. And I also do it so that I can convince myself out loud that things are okay and I will feel better. And sometimes faking it till you make it in that way works. Honestly, it's worked my whole life. Uh, but I think I'm, I'm trying to make the most concerted effort possible to turn it all around and help the people that I love the most deal with the shit that they're being dealt to. Cause I'm getting my fair share, you're getting your fair share whatever you're thinking about out there, it's valid, it's real, we're all in the same boat, it's trash, but it's not permanent. Everything really does pass, and um, you know, once your, your butthole's sore enough, the moon's gonna give up and say, Let, let's move on to another planet where, that I can fuck from the inside out over there too. And at that point, you'll be sore, and you'll be bleeding, but damn it, you'll be on the other side. And that's really 
all that matters. <laughs> um, and you know what I do when things like this happen, when there are moments where I feel like I'm out of control, I just take long fucking walks. And I know, Ani, you're the same way. We Absolutely. go outside, we touch grass, mm -hmm. or we at least, you know, put our feet on the ground and we just walk until we forget about stuff. Or we walk until we have good ideas. Um, or just walk until we think about nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, I went on a run. Usually, I, I like to, I live in Jersey City and I, I take the path in and I run from Christopher Street to Midtown. And then after that, I go for a walk. I like to look at the, the store displays when they change and look at all the clothes that I can't afford and just kind of like dream out in the wild. And that's, that's always a good way for me to get my shit together. But after that, I wasn't really feeling the endorphin rush that I was expecting. And so when I got to Hoboken, um, I like got off the path and I went to a bar like in my workout gear, all sweaty and shit. And I walk in to like get a shot before like I, I walk home and the bartender was like really confused. And I was like, can I have a shot? And he was like, not answering. And I was like, you do sell alcohol here, right? And he was like, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Okay. What do you want? And I was like, geez, you don't have to judge me like that, like out loud. Um, but whatever, I had a couple of shots after I went on a run. And you know what? I wouldn't advise it, but <laughs> it's something to try. And I'm all about trying new things. I was just telling you guys a while ago, I went to see the, Tyler, the creator, on a whim by myself. And I just went and punched a bunch of kids in the face. I just really, I just started flailing. I just went in there alone. I had a big jean jacket with big pockets and I put my phone and my wallet and my keys in there, buttoned that shit up and I just started flailing. I was just throwing punches left and right and everyone was loving it too, um, or so I thought. Um, not that anyone complained, because if they did, I would just keep flailing. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you're just like, do things that you would never normally do. Give yourself new, cool experiences. Um, just to like freshen things up because another way uh, to stay sad all the time is to just never do anything new and that's boring um, and you don't have to spend money to do new things or you can spend like a really teeny tiny bit of money like also last week I went on a big sandwich journey where I <laughs> also took the path in um, and I went for my run started at Christopher Street and then I got tired at around like 33rd and then I remembered on Instagram um, earlier in the day, I saw this sandwich. It was like this chicken cutlet sandwich. And I'm a big fat slut for chicken cutlets. <laughs> They're the best shit in the world. And sometimes I just get in these phases where I eat the same shit every day. Um, you might call that autism. I just call it having a good time. But <laughs> I, I was like dead set on this chicken cutlet thing. I was like, where did I see that? Where did I see that? I found it. Um, and they were like, uh, this is just a sandwich that we're selling today. And I was like, oh shit. All right. I got to get it. This is a good, good way to like have a cool new like date of one and celebrate working out. Um, even if I didn't run that far <laughs> and I look and the restaurant is, it's called mama's too. It was really good. And I, it was all the way on West 105th. So I was on 33rd and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to walk it. And it was a beautiful day. And I walk and I walk and I said, you know what? At some point, I should probably order this thing so that it's like, you know, hot and ready by the time I get there, right? Because I'm impatient. Um, yeah, I'll walk 105 blocks to get a sandwich. But when I get there, it needs to be ready. I don't want to wait. And I go on the website and there's no way to order. There's like a menu, um, but it just has like pizza and none of the other stuff. So I call them and when the phone answers, it's like a voice recording saying, we don't take orders over the phone, um, just go online and order. So I'm like, maybe I'm really dumb and I missed something. And I go online again, I look, sandwich isn't there nothing about a special menu though so I'm like maybe it's something that I just kind of have to order when I get there but I wanted to be sure because I was coming from really really far so I email them and I go in the email and I go hello 
Uh, my name's Lauren. I'm walking really, really far to get this sandwich that I saw on Instagram. I attach the image and everything for reference, making sure that everyone's on the same page because I'm nothing if not professional. And uh, walking, walking, get no response. But uh, at a certain point, I get to 103rd, and now I've FaceTimed seven people. I'm like blasting music. I'm like getting in touch with people that I haven't talked to in years. Um, I got my whole family on FaceTime, and they're screaming at me. They're like, how dare you walk on the Upper West Side you know, without an escort or without a weapon? And I'm like... I got all the weapon I need right here. But also, I'm like, fucking, you guys don't know what New York is like now. It's not like, you know, you don't walk into the subway and get bombed anymore. You know that thing that always happened in the 70s? Um, but anyway, I'm talking to my parents at 103rd, and I get an email from the place saying that the sandwich sold out. And I had walked well over 100 blocks just to get it. And I'm absolutely fucking crushed. But... What did I do? I finished what I started, and I got there to the sandwich shop, and I didn't get my sandwich, but I got one of every slice of pizza that they had. I spent $65 on like eight slices of pizza, and everyone was like, whoa, having a party? And I'm like, whoa, trying to shut your fucking mouth? <laughs> I proceeded to sit at a table outdoors like an animal, and I take three bites of every pizza and I very pensively think about the flavors and the journey that I just had and wondering if it was all worth it. And, you know, it was because it's it's a memory I'll never forget. And damn it, the pizza was really good. Was it worth sixty five dollars? No, but it's all about the friends you make along the way. And I did see a guy spinning in circles in front of a bunch of cops. And you would have thought it was like an outdoor ballerina show at like Lincoln Center. It was like there were a lot of cops around, but not doing anything about it, just kind of rooting him on. So good luck to that guy. And God bless Mamas too. Shout out Mamas too. Um, that's just what it is. Sometimes you got to go on a big fat journey to get your big fat sandwich and then you don't get the big fat sandwich but you get a lot of fucking pizza and you eat it alone and you take all the slices home and you get really swollen because you're allergic to gluten and dairy. That's a twist you didn't expect, huh? <laughs> Way worse when you realize how much pain I was in after that. God. Oh, what have we done so far? God, there's... Doing a podcast by yourself is, like I said, it's something I've always wanted to do, but I mean, shit, it's a big lift, but I'm a big broad, so I can handle it. I, I had a cool idea recently, and you guys should chime in on this because I really want your honest opinion about it. I was talking to my friends about guns, and this was before the awful shooting that happened in Texas. God bless all those kids and their families fucked up. And enough is enough. Obviously, there's nothing I can say that hasn't been said before. It's so contrived and it's so awful. But whatever. Um, let's, like, fix things, right? And clearly there's this divide, not just, like, Democrat and Republican. It's way deeper than that. You have people who really believe that guns are important. I, I To an extent, I think guns are important. I like guns. I like the idea of protecting yourself. I like the idea of protecting your family. I like the idea of the military and the police not being the only people who have guns and you being a, a civilian who has the means to just like, you know, be on equal footing. Um, and America is nothing if not completely equal. So it, it's hard to think of a solution because you want to limit people's access to buying guns, having guns, and, you know, you want to make sure that psychos aren't getting guns. The other argument is that these psychos who are committing these atrocities aren't law followers, right? So it doesn't matter what well, people believe, and I'm, maybe it's true, but it is widely believed that it doesn't matter how many laws you put into place, 
the evil people will always find the back door and make awful things happen. So really you're just punishing people um, for things that they didn't do. But also you have people who are just like able to get a million guns and then have them in their house and not keep them locked and kids are shooting each other by accident or it goes off in your pocket because you don't know how to store it. And there's so many fucking dumb things that happen with guns. They're extremely dangerous pieces of equipment that are nothing like they were uh, when the Second Amendment was written. Um, and that was mostly for like what fucking like muskets or whatever the fuck they had. Irish, what kind of guns did they have back then? Are you aware? You don't have to look it up. But no, if muskets and shit. Musket is a, is a gun? Yeah. Tight. <laughs> That's good news. Yeah, the one you like load and you got to like stuff it. You the stuff ball it. And yeah, the yeah, yeah. Charge. Put a little tampon in there. <laughs> yeah, and there it was like hard. You couldn't like fire more than one shot in like a period of time, right? Like you had to be quick with it. You had to be real slick and like pack it. It was fucking. like a two-minute reload or something. It was like crazy. a recipe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Awful. Um, but we're talking about different different machinery than we had back then. So all of these things considered, and, and of course a million other things that I didn't state, um, I came to a cool conclusion that I think could solve a lot of problems. And this is not a joke. It's not a joke. Um, gun college. Listen to this, right? Most people who have guns right now are morons. There are so many, we can argue that point, sure, but there are so many people who have guns that I'm not saying they don't deserve them, but I think everyone, including all law enforcement, everyone like under Navy SEAL level needs better gun instruction, right? Um, if you're going to have a gun and if it's our right to have guns, uh, let's make a gun college sponsored by the government. You don't pay a dime. OK, this is my formal proposition. You elect. Let's like let's say you're some 18 year old redneck and you're like the day I turn 18, I'm going to get myself a gun. And that's your right, technically. Right. But that's, uh, you know, you're like a young boy. And just because it's your right doesn't mean you're not fucking crazy or irresponsible or going to show off with your gun at school and like hurt someone or, you know, shoot someone's window through. Like there's so much room for error and there's just not enough education. And I think that the access maybe shouldn't be limited except for passing through all these rungs of education. So by college, I mean like a credit system. You have to pass a certain amount of classes, and who knows what the bar of passing is. I wouldn't want someone to pass gun college with straight Ds. That wouldn't make me feel very good, and that's not really solving anything. But let's say you have these courses where you're learning how to shoot, how to store a gun, what kind of guns do what kinds of things, um, self-defense courses that are included so that in case you get into an argument or something, you feel like you have to protect yourself, giving you really strong like jujitsu level training to, you know, bring the situation to a less severe level. Um, and just like pass a bunch of classes and then get your certification. You can have as many guns as you want forever. Could a crazy person pass that and still do crazy things? Sure. But I also feel like there are too many mistakes being made that are causing harm where we could significantly reduce the bullshit that's going on and kind of quiet the, the super gun critics to the point where they're like, this could work. And fucking let the NRA fund it. Let the government fund it. Let whoever wants to like pay into these programs so that people can get a free gun education, fine. And it also doesn't have to be four years. It just should be a number of classes or a number of credits. You could bang it out if you're psychotic in eight months or something. Or you can do it like night school and make it take like six years. Um, it's, uh, that, that would be up to you and the dean of gun college, which should be me. 
Um, but I mean, do you guys think that that's a reasonable idea? Yeah, totally. I mean, it, ironically, like schools used to teach gun education in school, and then like I don't know if Columbine's what fucked it up, or but you could you see like photos from back in like the sixties, like high school. Yeah, like they'd have gun, they'd have like a gun safety course in like the sixties and seventies, and then they I don't know if it was Columbine or what exactly moved us away from having that, but ironically, we used to teach them in schools how to use guns correctly, and like. I know there's a lot of like gun safety courses, but they're not really required. I don't think to get a gun, which I think is kind of stupid. Yeah, I could be wrong, and I don't really know. But like, yeah, it's kind of. I don't silly. think anyone needs to pass a seat. I think you need to pass like a written exam, but like just to say, like demonstrate on paper that you're mm-hmm. aware of yeah. the things that like you need to do. Lecture courses. Yeah, but like I would want people to like show practicums. that they can do that. Sure. Yeah, I'm it's not saying write an essay. Yeah. Like yeah. not not something like fuck it. I don't even care if you know how to read. They should as just long teach as everyone, even if you like don't ever want to have a gun. It's like they sh- it should be like a required basic training. Like you know, if you don't go in the military, you at least need to go do this to learn how guns work. Right. I, I think also, it is an education problem. Yeah. You also get to learn how to balance a checkbook. Another thing we don't teach. Anyone. Right. Gun college and financial literacy. Yeah. Yeah, they're both things that are apparently lost arts. This is news to me about old gun school. I thought I was coming up with something revolutionary. Did I Google it once? Of course not. Um, This is something that I easily could have Googled. But when I have spoken about this to my friends enthusiastically, they were like, yeah, gun college, great idea. Were we drunk? Of course. But that's okay because it's still a really good idea. And I love guns, but I hate what they do. Yeah. You know, but having like a a defense... uh, you know, tool is nice to have when the shit hits the fan. And I don't know if you guys remember, but like early on in the pandemic, people were loading up on guns and very quietly, but the word got out and it was Democrats. It was Republicans. It was absolute. Was it you too? Oh, you're smiling like (laughs) me also. I also bought guns. I have nothing to say to that statement. I wanted a gun. I was like, how do I get a gun? Because there are people stealing from each other's houses. And I'm not saying you should just go off and start shooting, you know, your troubled neighbor who in their moment of weakness broke into your shed. Like, that's a fucked up thing. But, like, should people just be murdering each other? I don't think so. But... Also, it's like a pretty innate thing that happened where people just started loading up on protective things, just like people stockpile toilet paper or food like you. You have the survival instinct built inside of you. And sometimes that manifests in buying guns. And it's not just, you know, right wing people. It's everybody. The the right wing people are reasonable in their belief. The left wing people are reasonable in their skepticism. I think there's room for some kind of middle ground that keeps people safer than where we are now. Like, we have to take baby steps. Everyone thinks that we're like, we have to solve this right now, and that would be great. But clearly that's impossible because, like I said, even if you were to pass a law right now where, like, if you have a gun, like, you can't, you got to hand it in. Like, no more guns. Like, First of all, that would start all this trouble, right? The trouble's an understatement. But you would also have the people who are crazy and planning their manifestos um, doing things in the illegal ways. So, I mean, being realistic about everything is step one. Step two, make the government pay for it all. Step three, um, drink. I don't know. But, yeah, there's something, there's something to be done for sure. And I, dude, I fucking love shooting. It's so much fun. Like holding a gun, you don't think that it's true. And you think that like guns are just tools to hurt people or that they're just a universal evil and we should just scrap it, right? Um, That's dumb if you think that you're dumb. (laughs) But um, like holding a gun for the first time, I think I was like, 17 or something in Florida where they literally didn't they they checked my ID in the same way that like I don't know (laughs) like in the same way that you like smile at a stranger like it doesn't mean anything everyone forgets about it the second that it happens like it's just a free-for-all in Florida no one's got like uh they give you like the protective ear wear but you don't have to wear it um they make you watch, they were like, watch the safety course, and they put it on like a 
old TV with like bars going down it and you can't hear it, you can barely see it. And the guy's like, make sure you do that for safety. And you're just like, oh shit, like <laughs> someone's gonna get shot in here. Miraculously, like something instinctual happens when you're around danger where you're just like behaving a little bit more. Of course, it's not the case for everybody, but generally like people kind of tighten up and they like make sure that they're doing things right so that they can both have that shooting experience and also like not hurt the people around them or get in trouble or banned from that location or whatever. But man, the targets that they had there are fucked up. It's like you've never, you don't even realize like they got people with turbans and I'm not laughing because I think it's funny. I'm laughing at the fact that that was like, recently that was less than 10 years ago like we're not talking before like you know any of these social conversations have reignited we're not talking right after 9-11 we're talking like Hillary Clinton like like famous women that people hate non-white people in like cartoonishly caricature style uh things and people are just going off bam 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 and I'm just like ah, oh, this is nuts I opted for the circle <laughs> You know, <laughs> the one that's just not a person. Because I don't have, I didn't have that kind of anger in me then. I think I might now, not for for brown people or Hillary Clinton, but certainly for other people. And it would be really cool if you were able to like pay 50 bucks and uh, have them print out like whatever image you wanted. Uh, <laughs> that would be a cool feature. Um, gun store owners, feel free to take that. Um, but shooting is fucking wild. It's terrifying the first time you do it. You realize that the power, something like that has. And I just had a little handgun. Like, it wasn't anything crazy. My dad's over here, like, with big things that go across your whole body. And, like, when you shoot them, they, like, punch you in the in the uh, fucking, what is this called? A shoulder, I believe. Um, <laughs> can't confirm. But, yeah, guns are, are rad but scary. And you have to respect things that are really powerful. And I don't mean respect them as in, like, revere them or love them or, you know, protect them at all costs. But you have to, like, respect what they do, respect what they can do for you as a civilian, and also respect what they will be doing to you from people who want to do bad things to you. And uh, if everyone had, like, knowledge about how to handle and navigate these situations better, I think the world would be a better place. So Gun College, we'll call it um, Gun University. We'll come up with a better name. Um, the Bang Bang Institute. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it sucks. You don't want the worst of the worst people in this world defining what the best and slash normal people do in this world but guns are fucking terrifying and they're capable of horrible things and people are capable of horrible things so you know keep those things in mind senators who are watching and i know you are um let's fix this problem in like the coolest way possible i believe in doing everything in the coolest way possible have guns but like fucking know your shit you know and sound off if you have anything to say about gun college uh email me at uh info at laurenslist.com there and we'll address the Lauren's list stuff in a moment um maybe even now how much time have we been doing hell yeah we'll get into Lauren's list right after this then but yeah info uh at laurenslist.com is where you can talk directly to me. That is my email address, and I read everything, um, the bad and the good. And if you send me nudes, I'm going to post them on OnlyFans and make money off of them. And don't fucking try me, because I'll do it every goddamn time. Um, I've done it before, and I'll do it again. I haven't done that. That's probably illegal. It's probably revenge porn. It's probably monetizing revenge porn, but... <laughs> You know what? Don't send me your dick in my email that I'm giving you. I'm trusting you guys. I want to hear from you. Um, so sound out, sound off about gun college or anything Lauren's List related. And now we'll get into the Lauren's List portion of things. So basically the way that this is going to work is that um, 
you know, this Lauren's dream house is my public video diary. It's going to be fun. It's going to be funny. It's going to be serious. It's going to be sad. It's going to be whatever I feel like I can talk about in earnest. Um, if there's something excellent and funny that happened over the weekend, of course I'll talk about that. If, like, you know, we just had this awful shooting. I barely know anything about it other than the fact that people are really mad about the cops and what they did in the situation. And I, uh, based on what I've heard, I agree with that. But I'm not going to talk about nothing I don't understand. Believe that. Uh, <laughs> and I hope you appreciate that and don't think that I'm, you know, avoiding necessary and important topics because they are necessary. But when those things happen, I just think of gun college. I think what's the coolest thing that we can do with this horrible thing? Um, but it's going to be all of those things. And it's also going to address Lauren's list. Now, you're probably watching this um, because you're either my mother and I'm very sorry for everything that's happened on this so far. Um, and I got to I'm going to start having like a like an episode code where like if it ends in an odd number or something, or if I put like an X in the title, like my family's not allowed to watch it. Cause I, I'm going to, I mean, I don't do, I keep it real. We're keeping it real perpetually. Um, I am nothing if not real. It's a N S F L F not safe for Lauren's family. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> that. We'll do that. <laughs> we'll put like a little flashing thing in the thumbnail like a large chode. That's an oxymoron. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're gonna be we're gonna be addressing whatever the fuck I want because it's my show and I'm fucking paying for it until you guys donate more to me. It's gonna be exactly what I want and not what you want. But the Lawrence List stuff is very important and that, that is what you want. So you're probably here because you've heard of that. Um, and if you haven't, let me teach you. So Lauren's List is my matchmaking dating service. Um, it addresses and has addressed for the past almost a year. When we have the year, we'll have a big celebration. Um, but it is a matchmaking and dating service where I match you with the ideal match in your area um, for free and discreetly. So a lot of matchmaking services, um, especially the ones that are like one-on-one -on -one, um, and even dating apps, you're able to see the people who are on the roster who, or who are on the app. Um, but on my list, you're not allowed to know anything about anyone. I have all the information about you. And with that information, I gather it and I compare it. And the questions that I'll ask you and that I, I have been asking are, you know, along the lines of where do you live? How far are you willing to travel to see this person? Are you looking for a relationship? Are you looking for a third or fourth in a sexual situation? How kinky are you? One to ten. Um, you know, describe your vibe. Describe your style. Um, are you a piece of shit? Um, if so, like, don't do this. Um, and I kind of personally vet every person. I, I give them a solid Google if I don't know them, you know, most of the people I know, um, at this point, they've been really cool, like interactive fans slash clients of sorts. Um, but, uh, I will take your information. I'll match you with the ideal person in your area. With that, I tell you, you have a match. Um, and from there, depending on what you specified in your questionnaire, whether it be text message or email or um, Instagram handle. That's the three that we facilitate right now. And by we, that means me because um, no one else makes the matches but me. But I am the royal we. So every time we say we, it's all five of me. <laughs> um, I'll match you with that person and you exchange Instagrams. And from there, you just go off. And uh, you don't have to give me feedback about how it went, although a lot of people do. People take me out to dinner when they have really good matches. Uh, people call me text me about how things went or you know now they're on their third or fourth date some of them have been dating for months some of them um you know one person told me uh last week that they met the match and blew them in a park and then left and then met the man of their dreams and that's i take responsibility for both because i <laughs> i created the trajectory thank you um, 
so yeah, this can work in any span of ways and you're really not allowed to complain about it because it's free. Um, but there haven't been any complaints thus far because it's just a really cool way to meet people. And most of our clients right now are in New York and in New Jersey. We have some in California. We have one in France. We have one in Australia. Uh, we have one in Virginia, all these scattered people. So my effort here is to kind of talk about the list, spread the good word. Um, on some of these occasions, I'm going to bring up what I call mystery listers, who are people um, that I DM through the Lauren's List Instagram, which is at its Lauren's List, and I'll tag everything at the end, make sure that you guys know where to find it. Um, but I'll request from some of the listers uh, to send me like a 30 second to two minute long spoken bio where they tell me about themselves and kind of just like give a little deeper of a look into their personality. And that's the most public that anyone will ever be made on the list. So like I said before, everyone and everything is anonymous. Um, but if you choose to be a mystery lister, I distort the hell out of your voice. I'll never give your identity. If someone DMs and says, can I know who this person is? I will never answer them unless I think that that person is really compatible with you. In that case, you know, you could be linked up with someone based on that mystery lister, um, you know, bio that you send in. And we're not going to do one of those today. Um, but we do have like eight in the bank and we're just gonna go through them and talk about them and maybe I'll even get one to sit next to me here with like a bag over their head and they'll talk about what they want to find in a person um but it's really it's really cool and it's really fun and the for some reason it's just always been important to me and this is something that people don't know is that the matchmaking is really important to my history and my family's history, even though I've never used Tinder or Hinge or any dating app. Um, and my parents met while working at a dating service. That's actually something that we spoke about on House Ho. Indeed. Check out that episode, it was really fun. But um, my parents were in their teens, they were in high school, and they worked at a dating service called Singles Choice in Sea Caucus, New Jersey. And it was their job to send out like these paper questionnaires to people who were single in the area. And also they would cold call people. And when I have my dad on soon, we'll talk about that. And we're probably, we're not gonna get to his Instagram today. We definitely will next time. This is a good way to get you listening next time because my dad is a treat and my mom is a treat, less so, but they're both treats. I'm a fucking snack. So if I'm a snack, my parents must be treats. <laughs> um, but uh, they would they would kind of solicit these um, singles, these like sad old people in Sea Caucus, and just kind of be like, "Well, let's let's make this happen. Let's get you a date." But they would like ask how much they weigh and how much money they make and all this like information that you just like shouldn't have as at least as like a 16 year old you know um but their office was crazy and I grew up hearing those stories and all of my parents friends all worked there so it was like you know kind of like everyone's summer job and some job that they had during the school year and it was just fascinating to me and I love the idea of hooking people up and I've done it for as long as I could remember I hooked up a lot of people who are some of them are still dating one of them is married um of course I take full credit for that but it's just a fucking fun time, and I just want everyone to... My thing is that I'm either getting you laid or I'm getting you paid, and that's fucking it. And hopefully always both. But we'll work on that. And Lauren's List has been around for almost a year. Um, I believe July 23rd will be the one-year anniversary, and I can't wait. We'll have a lot of things planned for that. Um, but more info on that soon. And the way, we'll end on this, the way that Lauren's List started, and I haven't told this story yet, really, um, was that I was dating my current boyfriend um, last summer in a very complicated scenario that I'm not really gonna get into, but his roommates were both comics as well. He's a comic, they were comics, and we wanted a place to get down 
and fuck uh, without the comics knowing that we were doing that um, because we just didn't want all that smoke immediately, you know? So we wanted to get them out of the house. And my boyfriend was like, how do we do that? And I was like, oh my God, I have an idea. And I just started making videos about, you know, if you're single, like, I want to help you get laid. I want to match you up with someone in the area and let's just kind of like tie all, all of my friends loose ends at once and fucking get all of you guys laid. You're all bored and complaining about being, you know, celibate anyway. Um, and I was like, um, it's free. I'll just do it. You DM me. I'll make it happen. And overnight we had like 30 people and then that was just in our area. And I was like, this is like popping off. And then one thing led to another and people kept asking me people that I like, didn't even really know saying like, I heard of Lauren's list. What is it? And how do I join? And after that happened enough times, I just said, okay, I'm going to make this a formal thing. And I invested thousands of dollars of my own savings of which I have none now um, to make this happen all because I wanted to get um, these dudes out of the house so that I could fuck in private. So, I mean, talk about doing something fun just to spice up your life, right? <laughs> um, and now it's a business. And look, it's free. I want it to always be free. But I would really appreciate if you went on to the at It's Lauren's list link in bio uh, you can find the shop there. I sell really cool merch. We're going to have new merch this summer. Um, and everything that you buy just goes towards the, the business. Everything just goes back into the infrastructure and making sure that I can support this financially and hopefully start, like, making money from it. Because um, right now, I'm still in the red. And everyone's fucking, but I'm broke. <laughs> Crazy how that happens. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But, um, honestly... I do love doing it and I want to do it for a very long time as long as I can sustain it. And if you want to be part of that, all you have to do is DM the Lauren's List Instagram site. I'd like to be on the list. From there, I give you instructions and you take it from there. It's very simple. But I really hope to see you soon. And this has been delicious. Um, I know I kind of went off about chicken cutlets and guns for a while. But honestly, if there were two things that I had to put like on a charm bracelet that like represented who I am, <laughs> it would be like deviled eggs, chicken cutlets, guns, R. Kelly. Like these are things I just gave you a very intimate look into the things that I care about the most in this world. So help me get to this goal up here. Um, let's take the music back and let's just uh, work on not having a garbage summer for now. Let's set really small goals. Um, goal number one, you get laid, I help you with that. Goal number two, you scrounge up $35 and buy a t-shirt. I don't know, just, it's possible, right? Uh, three, just keep tuning back in and spending some time with me because I'm here lulling you to sleep. And this is night night time. This is Lauren's dream house. You have been absolutely lovely. Thank you for listening to me. Um, unfortunately, I have to go back in my jar. Um, but the next time you tune in, um, maybe Larry will give me a little bit of a break. <laughs> Mr. Silverstein, if you're out there, I, I want to have a word with you. Because he did 9-11. Anyway, I'm Lauren LaRoe. This has been the first episode of Lauren's Dream House. Cheers, motherfuckers. Sweet dreams. Sweet dreams.